Welcome to our last session, Mind the Brain. Today it's all about story living, how XR technologies can be used to tell stories about life, love and death in new ways. Mind the Brain. Dancing life with my brain, who wouldn't, who wouldn't like to do that? In a neurosensitive VR installation, visitors experience the wonder of the brain together. We have invited Katrin Brunner and Oliver Cheslik, the CEOs and co-founders of Mindstorm Productions, to present us this wonderful project. Um, they combine art, science, neuroscience and personal experience to a VR installation. And um, they are both very curious people who have worked in VR for, for a long time and um, also like to explore um, yeah, new, new experiences, push the boundaries, what we just said in the last session. This is what the XR community, um, yeah, what, what's so great about the XR community, to have all these really curious and uh, fascinating people. So I, I will hand over now to Katrin and Oliver to present us their wonderful project. Hello. So I'm Katrin Brunner. Um, welcome. And this is Oliver Cheslik. Together we are Mindstorm Production. And we are truly happy to be live here today in my home state of Bavaria, um, virtually live, um, which really knows a thing or two about innovation. And today we are here um, to tell you about uh, Mind the Brain, which is an experience in neuroreactive virtual reality. And now you'll ask yourself, what's this? That, that sounds crazy and it sounds very technical. Um, actually, it is technical, but it creates an astonishing journey that leads you to be able to interact with your own self. Um, it took us a crazy journey to get there. And um, yeah, we want to tell you a little bit and um, stay with us to find out more. Yes, and therefore we'd like to do a Q&A with you, but it's um, unfortunately not, not possible here at the moment. So we will do it on our own if it's okay for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot see raising your hands. So uh, <laughs> I will ask uh, my, my very brilliant partner, Catherine Brunner, uh, and my beloved wife as well, uh, some <laughs> questions. Yes. So, Catherine, tell us, um, what brought you to the idea to create a VR installation on the brain? Yeah, I mean, it's not the first thought that you get, um, but um, at one time, for us, it was an obvious thought. Um, so, basically, where do we come from? Um, Oliver is a screenwriter, an author, and his plays have traveled all around the world. Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman directed his play Katafi Rocks and um, basically his passion for all the time was um, narration. Um, whereas I come from um, 20 years of developing video on demand portals um, from the business side. Um, also a step where basically technology has changed the way we watch content and the way we tell stories. Um, we found that virtual reality actually is in a pivotal place uh, in, in time because it really changes the way we tell stories. Um, instead of looking at a screen in front of you, you're actually part of what happens. And that changes the rules of how we tell story. And um, it's fantastic that we have this day at um, XR area today, which is actually on story living and on this community that really changes to rewrite the rules. And um, yeah, so we, we, we saw this opportunity coming up and saying, what do we do? Um, and we also thought we don't want to be theoretical about it because um, there's a lot to say um, on a theoretical basis, um, but in the end you have to try things out. And so we were sitting at the kitchen table one day and said, okay, why don't we take as a starting point the ultimate narrator, the one that really tells all the stories and that is actually the brain. There's also a personal experience of Oliver's that's at the back, um, but more to that later. You mentioned that the personal story, yes, that was um, f four years ago on the 1st of October, um, I had a stroke, um, which was uh, quite challenging. Uh, but this, I, I don't want to tell about me. Uh, I want to ask you, besides of fear, uh, what did you notice uh, when I had the stroke? Yeah, so, 
So this session is also on stories about life and death, and it was a life and death situation. So, um, and as you know, strokes come out of the blue. We didn't really know what was happening. And um, it was a very intense time. Um, but what happened actually is that Oliver's brain started to, to function very differently. And um, it, he started to see um, things and stories and it started to produce pictures that we couldn't see, but that were very, very alive. Um, one, one example was we were at the hospital looking inside, um, outside um, at, at bushes. I was with my father and Oliver was seeing how a film was screened right in front of the hospital. And he could tell it like it was really happening. There was a geisha there. Um, and it was a very lively scene. And actually later on, we could find out even that there were certain branches in the bushes that co corresponded to his story. When I took a picture, he could even tell where this geisha was in the picture of the bushes. So what, we've, what we basically found out or what we, what we really experienced is how narration is something that's very dependent on the way your brain works. And the brain is a wonderful thing um, because it reconnects. Um, so um, the term is neuroplasticity. We found out that was a lot of training and it took us two years. Basically, Oliver is now more fit than ever. And, um, but we wanted to bring this to the people also because we've seen that it's very difficult for many people to talk about these things. And um, we wanted to find a basis to, to basically bring our experience with these new mechanisms that we found in virtual reality to the world, but also to, to open up people to be able to talk about that better. So it's obvious, uh, obvious that it is uh, also about terms like uh, fiction and, and so-called reality, isn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. um, so um, fiction and reality is what we think um, is, is playing together in a new way. Um, I think at Median Target you could hear a lot about this. Uh, if you look at um, what social media does, the way that uh, our society basically now writes stories about reality. If you see Donald Trump fans, they actually produced movie-like posters for what's happening at the moment in the final phases of the election. Um, so in many ways, we see that um, the way we tell stories and reality play together in a new way. And, and that's also a starting point for what we did with Mind the Brain. Okay. It's also a starting point for Mindstorm production. So maybe next slide. <laughs> well, that's the next uh, question. So was Mindstorm Productions founded uh, to create Mind the Brain or is there something different uh, as well? Okay, I, I see there's a very, sorry, it's a bit of a different version of the, of, um, <laughs> of the, <laughs> of the slide. So, um, okay, <laughs> sorry, this is not the, the, the slide about Mindsome Productions. Yes, um, we, we basically founded Mindsome Productions to basically go about um, new terms of narration. Um, you'll see Oliver and me, and you also see Fred Kellerman, who's basically part of this journey, especially with Mind the Brain. Um, but Mindsome Productions does more. We also produce art hot films. Um, and um, we do social media, we also do consulting, we do events like um, an event on storytelling and virtual reality uh, together with InVR at the Planetarium during Berlinale last year. Um, so basically, um, this changes in how we tell stories is really behind what we do. Um, maybe we look at the next slide. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. So, um, Oliver, you have a question yes, for yes. me. <laughs> so, so, just a little correction, because Berlinale was uh, uh, this year. We can't imagine that, but True. it's so, so, so long ago. <laughs> also, <laughs> also a very, very different time perception, yeah. Uh, so, um, Catherine, there's so much technology you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. What is the role of technology uh, for, for us Mindstormers? Yes, we think that technology really is at the core of bringing out the human. Um, we also think that the big changes that we see in society are actually based on technology. And this is why we, we basically work a lot with technology, even though it's maybe not the first thing if, if you think about how do people on an artistic basis go about telling such a story and, and, and coming to basically to talk about such a story, then the first idea wouldn't be to have um, brain interfaces, computers, and um, a lot of different difficult parts that play together. Um, 
but we found this as a medium that's very interesting. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we, we talked a, a lot about the background. So uh, please give us some. Um, how can I imagine or mind the brain? What's the experience? Concrete? Yeah. So may maybe next slide again. Um, so. How can you imagine it? Um, imagine Mind the Brain as a, a poetic journey that brings you right inside your brain. Um, it's based on scientific pictures, but we actually took a very artistic approach, especially with Fred Kellerman. You've just seen his picture, who's a, a, a very versed um, DLP and also director himself. He won um, the German Film Awards, the Deutsche Filmpreis. Um, He won um, as a DOP of Bellatar's Turin Horse. Um, he has won um, a silver bear at Berlinale. Um, the Turin Horse has been um, acquired by MoMA. His works have been at the Tate Modern. So he has a very, very different view on these uh, pictures. And what you can see in, in the background here is our cathedral of the brain. It's the starting point that brings you inside of your brain. And what you see there is actually a mixture of a scientific model and an actual scan of your, your brain. So um, a very different from vis visualization. Um, Mind the Brain then takes you more and more uh, deeper on, on, on different levels into really the, the neurological part of the brain and um, on the microscopic level. Um, whereas in, in the finishing picture, you actually are really um, entering the, the realm of your thoughts. And there it really becomes interesting because that part is really very much based on the neuroreactive interactivity. Um, so it does react to your brain waves. And um, it's yes, a, Catherine, Catherine, can you it's tell a very interesting thing. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the thing called computer brain interface, BCI? How does it work in our experience? Mm -hmm. So um, maybe you've, you've heard that Elon Musk is also working on computer brain interfaces. What he does is um, he actually gets an, a little signal inside the skull um, that measures your electrical activity. Um, we don't go so far. We work with medical grade brain interfaces um, that are used in medical practices for um, controlling HDHS. And um, what they do is they measure the different steady that your brain is in. Um, it's actually um, an, a, a very interesting experience to, to learn that you have these states, unless you, you train it with a brain interface with neurofeedback, many people don't know this, whereas, for example, our dog notices very, very easily. Um, and um, what we did is we trained a um, different part of the experience to react to that. So um, maybe if we go to the next slide, you will see um, We have parts um, where you fly through your neurons inside the experience and the animation of the neurons is actually um, really controlled by the, the signals of your brain. And if you go one step further, um, you'll end in what we call the poetic room. This is a picture of the poetic room. And um, you only see these pictures if you really focus on these pictures. Um, it's a fascinating interactivity. We've had people, we're still, in the final phases of finalizing it. Um, we've had people coming back um, to do this um, for an hour through ice cold Berlin, just to, to, to be able to do it again. Um, it's very hard to describe. Um, we're also very thankful for um, all the support we've got from Film Fancy for Bayern um, to trust in us because it's really hard to describe what we're doing there. And um, they did it, they, they jumped. And um, yeah, we also hope that you can soon find out um, how this works. So, and how, 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 how did Mindstorm uh, develop this with, with, the, with this great team? I mean, it's a, it's a big team in, in times of COVID-19. Uh, COVID yeah. we, we, st we started the, the final phase of the production now with funding really in April, really during COVID times. Um, and um, the good thing about producing in virtual reality um, and producing with 3D artists um, working in with 3D models is that we basically did not need to meet very often in person. So basically, this is our production studio. It was we were actually working in Zoom, just as we we are um, live here now. Um, we're even coding together. We have our our 3D artists that that did that, that together. And um, for me. 
as I'm not a technology person, it was always a little bit like looking at a chimney fire if they're coding together. Um, we did have several workshops um, in the beautiful state of Bavaria at Starnberger See, right after the lockdown. We will always remember this. Um, and uh, also some more testings because we needed to test the interactivity ourselves. But um, we are very much used to working digitally, so it was actually not a big change of how we would have worked anyway. So, so, so very shortly, uh, um, is this um, only for one person at a time? It's, it seems so, or is there is it um, is it is it a standalone experience, or can can we share it in, as a collective? Yeah. So maybe we get to the next slide. Um, actually, Mind the Brain is available as a standalone version that you can use at the moment um, with your brain interface. But as we do think one person, one brain interface, the brain interfaces are not very common. Um, we also thought this has to be a broader experience. So it's actually an installation. And we started out with developing the installation together with partners, um, especially from the Bauhaus University. Um, and we've been showing it a, a number of times. And uh, maybe if we go to the next step. Um, and we also do have an eight-step model. It's an, a narrative model on how we go about with this installation. Um, we call this concept the black box. You can actually see the black box in the middle. And um, what we do in the eight-step model is that we give a common intro to everyone. Um, then we choose the one. The one is the one that will be our, um, our how you can also say, medium. So the, the one, the, the person that will wear the VR glasses, he's the camera for everyone else in the room. He's also wearing the brain interface. And there is a reaction between the brain interface and the people in the room as well. Um, and basically, um, while the one person is watching inside the black box, we screen and we, we project to the outside walls. Um, and afterwards we bring everyone together and it's really a shared experience that makes people talk very openly about the brain. Um, we found out that we have very different target groups. Um, we found out that, for example, oh, that's maybe not surprising that the generation Z, um, they really loved it under the, this is like Black like Mirror um, version. Um, but we also had senior citizens that came back and brought their wives because they thought it's so interesting um, because actually a lot of senior citizens, of course, have a lot of thoughts on their brain activity and how it might change or they might know someone with Alzheimer's. Um, we also, of course, have people that are interested very much in the artistic part, especially having Oliver and Fred on board doing works in VR, which is not very common. And um, last but not least, of course, we had a lot of people that, that come from neurological professions that also cherished a lot of how we have different thoughts. Great. So there are a lot of social aspects and communication uh, as well in, in, in this project. And um, sh shall we introduce uh, this, this great team, at least the core team for Mind the Brain. The whole team is about mm -hmm. 24 people, but here I think for, for the Munich experience, we have seven or eight. Yeah, maybe maybe we go to the okay. next slide, we'll see some. Unfortunately, we are missing a little bit <laughs> one slide because we, we just changed it on last notice. Um, so yeah, um, basically it's really hard to pick them up because the, the picture is very small, um, but we, we, Sebastian Esposito, who basically is in the middle of the, the, the central slide, and he's kind of VJing with the brain interface. He's a 3D artist. He also developed um, the very, very interesting um, part that I call Zardos, um, which really reacts to your brain waves. Um, Mark Herrmann, who's from Trick Labor, um, is a, a 3D artist that specialized on, on scientific visualization. And if you're flying through your neurons, basically that's that's his work. Um, Nilto Carsten Fischer has developed the sound. Um, if you'll see our teaser in a while, um, the teaser should actually best be heard with um, headphones because it's binaural and he has a very long tradition in working with 3D sound. Um, Daniel Lichtenstern is a Unity programmer and Tobias Heile from BrainBoost, which is the neurological practice. They are the ones that basically brought the interaction with the brain interface to us. And last not, but not least, uh, we should mention Juliane Fuchs, who basically with her team at Bauhaus University built that black box and 
even carried it all the way to Amsterdam. If we go one slide further, quickly we can see where we've been basically testing it in open labs. We started at Bahat University. Um, we've had a very wild time at Reeperbahn Festival where we basically set up the first installation with projection in a container um, right across a, a little bit earlier in the year last year, but we had to build everything ourselves. So it was a really interesting and wild way to do this. Um, then we were at VR Days Amsterdam at the Creators Lab, which basically was already something that um, um, there's a good cooperation between Munich and, and the VR Days. Um, as we said, we had a show more on the narrative side at Berlinale, and now we're basically getting ready for the big premiere. Of course, in times of COVID, probably not the one with many, many people in the room, but we're also getting ready for that. So, Catherine, tell us, will, will there be a chance in the near, near future to experience this, this stuff? Yes, for sure. We're working on the first session and premiere in Munich, um, most probably at a big church. And um, yeah, whoever wants to get on board with that, um, wants to support us, just get in touch with us. And um, maybe we go one slide further as well. Um, Yeah, this is how it could look like. <laughs> Let's hop on to the next slide. Yeah, this is this is basically what we're working on right now. And um, yeah, do you see our motto? The script is finished when it is destroyed. Um, right. So I think we don't have a lot of time left. Um, but Rene, um, now we are witnessing a very, very magic time because what you actually will see now is it's the first public screening of our teaser. It's still a, a first teaser, it's not the real trailer, um, but I'll be muted now and you'll get a first insight on Mind the Brain and have fun. And I'll see you later afterwards. <laughs> <Fill up. laughs> find the, the link to our Mindstorm exhibition on XR Hub um, in Mozilla Hubs in the 2D Expo or you can also um, basically go in there from the 3D Expo and if you want to have a chat join us there it's very easy. Yeah thank you again both of you that was really great and I hope that many um, visitors and will follow you now in, in your space. Thank you very much.
<laughs> Thank you, Thank Sergio. You. It was great.